Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Garbage Day. It is hour seven. Woo! We are more than a quarter of the way through. Hello, I'm Adam Bozarth. They let me host. And uh, <laughs> we are going to be, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to be covering our, our first, what is it? It's the first battle winner, right? Yeah, first battle winner. So your donations have determined what we're reading, and it's Party. the Mormon Alien Conspiracy. <laughs> Party. <laughs> Provided to us by Heavenator and Lesbiathon. Today, uh, or right now in in for this hour, it's me and Lemon. Hi. And John Toast. And Hi, Shula. I'm John Toast. Hello. And Positronic is going to be giving us uh, the artwork on the live stream. And yeah, is already Positronic. trying to connect the dots between, I guess, an alien, Garrison Keillor, Mitt Romney, and John Lennon. Oh. <laughs> it makes sense. I think I think it's all been mapped out, this conspiracy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, before we get into the uh, before we get into the reading, let's uh, put the prize for the for the hour on the table. What is the prize for the hour? The prize for the hour for the for the next uh, for the next donator to give us fifty dollars for the Southern Poverty Law Center. Your fifty dollar donation will earn you a prize from Nutshell Gulag, and that's a uh, a baked item of some sort. Is that right? <laughs> Gingerbread cookies, yes, and a <laughs> lovely handmade thank you card. So gingerbread cookies, a homemade thank you card, homemade gingerbread cookies, and a homemade thank you card. <laughs> no, I've already been to the store. <laughs> she already been claimed by Sherman Tank. Oh, oh, no. Thank you so much, Sherman Tank, for for okay. your hunger for cookies and cards. Well, we <laughs> thank I... you, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, thanks you. Like, I don't think that's actually right. I don't think that's true. No, what? I don't no? think that's true. No, uh, I don't think so. Which part of it is not true? That's certainly I don't think that it's claimed. Well, it's showing up on the live stream. Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, it's still on the table. Yeah. It's so still if on the you table. Felt a little bit of embarrassment that you didn't get to get those cookies in time. They're still on the table. <laughs> Dig that fifty dollars out and donate it to Garbage Day. So let's get started. We're going to dig into a very. Uh, <laughs> The, this uh, document, uh, which is titled An Argument for the Reform of the American Mental Health System. Yeah! Mm. Yeah, known, that's some good um, F-plus right there. Otherwise known as the Mormon Alien Conspiracy, compiled by the Les Python and the Heavenator. Um, and they their introduction reads as follows. This document includes Mormons, aliens, pseudoscience, and who the fuck knows what else. It is extremely extensive conspiracy th- Screed, compiled by a lady called Mary Sutherland. This website goes on forever, and it's all batshit. It's got a little bit of everything. Honestly, you can't go wrong. The Mormon alien conspiracy is pretty extensive and nuts. So we've included some summaries at the end, trying to explain what was going on in Mary's head. Uh, I think I did it all right. Yeah. So uh, let's start with Nutshell Gulag. Can you introduce us to Mary Sutherland? Uh, Sure. <laughs> All right. Mary Sutherland is Umbop. <laughs> Next reader. No. Who is Mary Sutherland? Mary Sutherland is an author and researcher focusing her work on consciousness studies, ancient history, and unusual phenomena. She is a hands on researcher and the creator mm. of one of the largest websites on the internet with hundreds of pages providing information on the paranormal, UFOs, ancient races, and their cultures, sacred sites and powerpoints of the world, underground tunnels and cave systems, dimensional worlds, metaphysics, etc. The hands governor... on is in quotes there, and that scares me. I'm not <laughs> sure what exactly those quotes mean. I just wanted to point that out. The governor of Kentucky commissioned her as a Kentucky colonel for her work on the ancient <laughs> sites of Kentucky. For the last five years, she has been exploring, mapping, and documenting the ancient underwater structures of Rock Lake near Azatlan. For the last 14 years, she has been documenting the ancient sites around Burlington, Wisconsin. Truth is her passion. She believes that it's through truth that we will break ourselves free of our present entanglements in life. When we become free, we will create our own personal story of the hero's journey suggested by Joseph Campbell. 
There are rare persons in this world who see things others don't, persons who connect the dots of existence and possess an instinctive talent for linking with kindred souls to reveal otherwise invisible patterns and excavate hidden truths. Such a person is Mary Sutherland. She is a natural-born networker in all she does, from her Burlington Vortex conferences and sci-fi cafe oh, to her oh. public talks and published books. Nowhere, however, is her gift for perception more developed than in her latest title, says Frank Joseph. Thanks, Frank. No. No, that's I. I don't like us making fun of that. I know people who were sucked into the Burlington vortex. <laughs> I'm sorry for your loss. They never recovered. I'm, you know, just. Is that somewhere inside the coat factory? <laughs> yes, it's where <laughs> they, so many coats were lost. <laughs> Thousands of vortex dollars. conferences. Right By the way, I just wanted to say it did not take long for your cookies to get claimed. Uh, so thank oh you yes, for uh, Neil S. Uh, Fifty dollars gets you uh, your cookies and a homemade card uh, from Nacho Gulag. Sniped from Sherman Tank. Neil S. <laughs> uh, let's Yay. so let's skip ahead because this is a little. Uh... <laughs> oh, hey, perfect, perfect segue music. <laughs> <laughs> Let's skip ahead because uh, apparently there is a uh, there's an ancient uh, civilization we need to hip ourselves to. So, uh, uh, John Toast, if you could uh, tell us about the science of Moo and the people of Moo. That'd oh, be the so KLF. You... So, Adam Bozo, do you want me to tell you about the science of Moo? Yes. Let me tell you about that and also the people of Moo. Unbeknown to, unknown to the majority, America at one time enjoyed a civilization second to none on Earth. They held and understood the ancient knowledge of Mu, the knowledge and workings of cosmic forces, which is the true science upon which the universe was built, and the religion that our holy texts are written around. Science in the first civilization. Although we pride ourselves on our advanced technology and intellect, we today are still very far behind a most wonderful and advanced civilization that pre-existed us. Mm -hmm, At mm -hmm. the time of the destruction of Mu, <laughs> that was approximately 10,000 BC. Jesus. Taking a drink for no reason, not that I'm destroying my voice right now. The no. sciences of which we know and are utilizing in the last 700 years were known to this culture and practiced through the development of over 100,000 years of study and experience. Possibly over 1 million years. Yeah, I don't right. know, I'm making this shit up as I go along. <laughs> Who the fuck cares? How about a gajillion? <laughs> 20 billion zillion. It's cool, right? Yeah. As you see, we have a long ways to go before we could even think of obtaining and familiarizing ourselves with what they knew, but we can learn and develop from the ancient texts they left behind for us. James Churchward wrote a very informative book titled The Cosmic Forces Move, <laughs> which is a startling occult study of this ancient super civilization more scientifically advanced than our own. Based on his research of over 4,000 ancient tablets originating from Mu, being that Churchward has developed most of his life, over 60 years of his research and study into this ancient race, I will be using much of his work as reference through these pages. We will trace his work back to the clay tablets of the Nichols? Nichols? Mm, yeah, through maybe. the Nichols, which originally bought a library of over 10,000 tablets from the motherland to our precious relics and tablets of the American mound builders. <laughs> so, yeah, I will. Uh, so, uh, uh, now that you've mentioned the mound builders, uh, 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 Mary does, talks a lot about the, the the mound building ancient civilizations that used to live in what is now Milwaukee or, or Burlington, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, and claims that these were some, you know, uh, lost race of, uh, of a lost tribe of Israel that, you know, has made their way there. So um, let's skip a bit ahead and, and find the connection. Uh, so, Lemon, if you can tell us about Burlington, Wisconsin, and the yeah. Veiled City of Voree. Uh, yeah, Burlington, <laughs> Wisconsin. It's my favorite anime. Uh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. Burlington, Wisconsin. Bur yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, unknown to most, except Mormons or Latter-day Saints, this quiet little town of shit... <laughs> Burlington, Wisconsin. Okay, this quiet little town of uh, Burlington, Wisconsin is not what it seems. While some see Burlington as Chocolate City, USA. <laughs> what? What? Why? 
Yeah, home of Nestle's chocolate. No, it's not. Uh, others, uh, possessive, know the hidden secret that lie within the unspoken name of Voree, right outside of Burlington. <laughs> The congregations of the Mormon church speak of Boree as the promised land or the new Jerusalem. Burlington and Boree are treasure chests filled with stories of the mystic with a K. My stick. <laughs> My stick. <laughs> uh, that's what I use to get rid of acne. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, they could have been one of the very places of the lost minds of Solomon. Uh, here's the Mormon oh, history. You skipped a lot. You skipped oh, the. Oh, they are home to the mound builders and an Israelite temp tribe that was here to harvest the bounty for King Solomon's temple. Right. Right. Okay, so uh, there's some more Mormon history about Burlington, mm -hmm. but uh, you might be asking, where are the aliens? And here is the alien agenda. Oh, okay. Resources, Branton. There are three general alien forces at work in this center of the universe. United Federation, Draconian, and Bavarian. <laughs> oh, that's the most... Those are the three food groups. <laughs> city. The United... Uh, so I will... Um, I will... Uh, oh my god, there's a lot about the reptilians, so we're gonna have to... <laughs> Skip a bit ahead. Welcome to the there... F plus. Oh my God, there's a lot about the reptilians. <laughs> there's a lot about the reptilians. Um, but here's a, a little bit about the United Federation. Originally having its genesis in an ancient Lyrian vegan alliance with the Murians and the Gobians of Terra, the Federation consists of a number of colonial worlds near Vega Lyra, the Andromeda constellation, the mm. Pleiades, Hades, open clusters, and their antimatter universe counterparts, the Coldasians, the Cali, the Dalites, Timers, etc., etc. Alpha Centauri, Tau Seta, Aseti, Epsilon Iridani, Iuma, Umo, Wolf Two Four Two, and others. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Okay. Uh, warp drives, dilithium core. Star Trek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mostly of human heritage, the Federation adheres to a strict non-intervention policy. Federation personnel apparently contacted William Shatner in the Mojave Desert years before yeah, he came out. Apparently, according to my research. Before yeah. he became famous for his part in the Star Trek series, and certain ideas from real life turned up in the inspired television series. Oh my god. Right, because so this William is just Shatner a... wrote Star Trek. This is just a plot for Galaxy Quest. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there is a section I want to move on to, and I think we can have a little bit more uh, fun with, mm -hmm. uh, because it's shorter, <laughs> is <laughs> the section on alien races. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> there are so many alien races. Uh, yeah. So Toast, why don't we start with the Alpha Draconians? Oh, you mean the Reptilians? Yeah, the Alpha from Alpha, the Alpha Draconians. Draconians. Yes. <laughs> In direct opposition to the United Federation is the reptilian race, the benevolent ones. Uh, this no, not that section. I... The... No, oh, no, I'm I sorry. I read the. <laughs> I read you the. Did. I read the other thing in this about reptilians. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> the Alpha Draconians. Okay, <laughs> one moment. Then. Alpha hyphen. Alpha, let's edit this out. Alpha Draconians, here we go, got it, got it. <laughs> reptilian beings who are said to have established colonies in Alpha Draconis. Like all reptilians, these claim to have originated on Terra thousands of years ago, a fact that they used to justify their attempt mm. to retake the Earth for their own. I've never heard that before, that the reptilians left Earth and are coming back to take it. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, it's, lore. yeah, it's like when you find a nice apartment, you don't buy it, but then somebody else buys it. And you're like, ah, but I wanted that. I'm, okay. <laughs> I want, and you shape uh, shift, I want so it. you steal it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they are apparently a major part of a planned invasion, which is eventually turning into covert infiltration mode to overt invasion mode as the window of opportunity, the time span before the international human society becomes an interplanetary and interstellar power, slowly mm -hmm. begins to close. They are attempting to keep the window 
open by suppressing advanced technology for the masses, which would lead to eventual Terran colonization of other planets by Earth and an eventual solution to the population, pollution, food, and other environmental problems. Being that Terrans have an inbred warrior instinct, the Draconians do not want them slash us to attain interstellar capabilities and therefore become a threat to their imperialistic agendas. Refer to L's. Oh, I, I will. I will. <laughs> Let us all now turn our hymnals. <laughs> all right. Uh, before we go, from the Bible. Uh, before we continue Great on Bible. with amoeba-like creatures, we need mm. to also shout out that uh, Turbo Sexophonic Delight <laughs> is also going to be receiving an, a batch of gingerbread cookies Yay! and a homemade card for their $50 donation. Thank you both, Neil S. and Turbo Sexophonic Delight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those are Very not words you expected to say this today, is it? No, I totally did. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. You know what you're getting into. So, I mean, can you tell us about the amoeba-like creatures? Yeah, so the amoeba-like <laughs> creatures are over polar regions of the Earth, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. No name that I can find. These have shown up periodically over the last 10 years. NASA is working on this. Every time they've been detected, all kinds of strange illnesses break out. They don't know how they can stay alive and be in outer space. The end. <laughs> so, so it's like it's like a. So it's like you look at them and then you suddenly get sick. Is that what that's saying? Hey, Bill, are you alive? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's mystery. weird. <laughs> oh, hey, look at that amoeba thing! <laughs> God damn it! Uh, nutshell, can you uh, tell us about the Anakim? The Anakim. Yes, the Anakim also referred to the to the Elves, short for Elder Race, or simply as the Giants. Referred to an ancient Hebrew tradition, this race is allegedly tied in with a branch of ancient humans who broke off from mainstream humanity because of their vast size, which had developed over the centuries, possibly as a result of a genetic anomaly. They are said to range anywhere from 9 to 11 feet, and in some cases even 12 feet in height, although in configuration they are remarkably similar to international humans. Yeah are said to possess a means of molecular condensing and expansion which allows some of their kind to mingle among humans on the surface. They have allegedly been encountered in deep and extensive cavern systems below the western part of North America, as far north as Alaska, as far south as Mayan Riviera, Mexico, and as far east as Texas. <laughs> okay. right. So uh, we're going to skip a few of these, like the Andromedans and the Antarcticans. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Bigfoot, although Bigfoot says... Sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. See what or who Bigfoot really is and click here. Such a tease. Click in I, there. I, I click and it's... Whoa, that's a crazy person website. That's what that <laughs> is. It's the same website Ooh. that we've been on. <laughs> and it's just... It's just the way it's the home. It's bigfootorigin.html, and <laughs> he, is an Ethander, he is an Ethanderthal man. So that's it. Um... Lemon, can you tell us about the Bootians? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you about the Bootians. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, y'all. Jesus Christ. So the Bootians? <laughs> These reptilians from the booty system. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, they're rocking everywhere. <laughs> These and reptilian entities from the Dracona system are allegedly involved in the Dolce scenario. <laughs> Mm, delicious. <laughs> this delicious caramel scenario, as well as the infiltration, hyphen, implantation, hyphen, control of human society on Earth and in anticipation of their planned takeover at some point in the future, Draconian. The end. All right. Um, I'm going to let you know about another alien race called the Dinosauroids. <laughs> Is there Human. some sort of particular look that the dinosaurites have? Do they get really offended when you confuse them with the reptilians? No, we're not even from the same era. God. <laughs> They're human dinosaurs. Uh, saurians. <laughs> we're technically closer to birds. <laughs> from the Nevada Aerial Research Journal for summer 1989. <laughs> Peer, this recent item, news item appeared in a Berkeley, California newspaper. Quote, Dale Russell, curator of fossil vertebrates at the National Museums of, Nash of Canada in Ottawa, has developed a theory that intelligent life forms could have developed from the large reptiles that roamed the Earth in ancient times. 
Russell calls his imaginary creature a dinosauroid, which would look like a hairless, green-skinned reptile with a bulging skull, luminous cat-like eyes, and three-fingered hands. The amphibians evolved into a humanoid species that evo eventually right. developed. Wait, are culture. they reptiles or the amphibians? <laughs> that ran its course or was destroyed in an Atlantis-like catastrophe. <laughs> But just I, can, I, can, I can hear Portex putting a fist through her wall just listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> but after they had begun exploring extraterrestrial frontiers, certain ufonauts then... Ooh, yeah. ufonauts! <laughs> what do ufonauts engage you? By Kenner. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Yay! Yay! <laughs> One more time. Ufoporno! <laughs> <laughs> Ufonauts, then, they may be descendants of the survivors of the amphibian culture returning from their space colony to monitor the present dominant species on the home planet. Right. Aliens, right? Yeah. That makes so, sense. Um, Nutshell, can you tell us about the alien race of dwarves? <laughs> what? Why, yes, I can. <laughs> Dwarves, diminutive humans who have allegedly been encountered in or near caverns in various parts of the world, including Northern California and the southeastern Arizona slash southwestern New Mexico region, and in some in connections to UFOs, although most reported dwarf sightings in connection to UFOs are actually sightings of the Saurian Greys. These should not be confused with the small elementals or nature spirits, which some believe are ethereal in nature yet have the ability to appear in solid or semi-solid form at times. The dwarf races are allegedly just as human as surface peoples, but average between three to four feet in height, although at times they have been seen as small as two feet. As with the giants, or elves, this diminutivity may have resulted in a genetic anomaly which ran its course due to the separation of their races from the international gene pool. They allegedly live in subterranean systems to a large extent as a protective measure, and, as we've said, some allegedly possess aerial disk technology and interplanetary travel capabilities. <laughs> yeah, so the dwarves live in caves on Earth. Oh my so god, we're gonna skip the, oh my god guys, I don't, I don't want to, I don't need all this backstory, can we just start playing? Jesus, <laughs> I got the dice <laughs> ready and everything. Right. Are you, how are you going to possibly <sighs> know how to play if you don't know the lore? I put so much play. time into this game, I'm not turning it into another hack and slash oh that. Have some respect, okay? Yeah, guys, uh, fine. I know you're all having fun, but these are alien races. And we're going to skip a few of them, like the Elohims and the Gypsies and the uh, Hubrids <laughs> and the Iguanoids. Which are, which are, which are, the Hubrids are hybrids, but they have hubris. Yeah. And we're going to skip the, the Jawas. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, it even uh, references Star Wars. <laughs> Original race, do not steal. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and oh, there's also Martians and Moon Eyes and Philadelphia Project I'm, I'm Aliens. Really, I really want to hear about the Philadelphia Project Aliens. Okay, why don't, uh, why don't you read that for us then? Okay. The Philadelphia Project Aliens. I refer to them as this because I wasn't given a name for this type of alien. They were detected as one of their ships got cut up and sucked in with the Eldritch, which ended up 40 years, August 12th, 1983, later at Montauk. They were about six foot five inches tall. They were essentially human in appearance. They had dark leathery skin. They had no hair. Where they came from is not for uh, for sure. Well, that was kind of boring, actually. <laughs> I was hoping for better from the Philadelphia Project aliens. We all we all were expecting better from the Philadelphia Project. Judging from the length of the other descriptions, I think this is where they ran out of steam. It's just like, uh, Philadelphia Project, I don't know if I can... They got to pee, and they're just, done. With I, was, I was just noticing, uh, as I was looking through that doc, can I tell you about Buddhas? <laughs> yeah, uh, tell us about the Buddhas. Yeah, so the Buddhas, they're Butta. beings... Yeah, they're be <laughs> Buddhas. They're beings that dwells in spiritual darkness. The person may be intellectually developed. Uh, the Buddha are, usually, are normally associated with nightmares, abductions, and the taking of small children. They usually come around at night. The gray aliens who do abductions fall into this category. The reptilians are also part of this group. They are not very physically attractive. Wow. Apparently, long ago, there was a visitation long ago by Buddhas called Wachachasas. <laughs> Wachachasas. Wachachasas. Uh, who were negative, powerful, aggressive beings. They were all driven to extinction by Paula Dean. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's get into some of the conspiracies under the section miscellaneous crazy things. Um, so uh, I will leave this. Uh, I'll give this option to you, John Toast. Ooh, okay. Would you rather, it's not one of the patented no choice ones, it's just a regular choice. Would you want to talk about tr time travel or abduction of humans? Ooh. Oh, time travel all the way, every day. Okay. Okay. All right, so all right. scroll down to its very beginning of the miscellaneous crazy things. Uh, can you read for us, time travel permits altering consciousness of a race? I sure can. Now, I am told that the Greys would love to be absolutely free of this hierarchy. What they have done is that they have continued to propagate the problem. Now, we have been told that the Greys have been here for thousands of years. Floating question, question mark? <laughs> <laughs> According to the Andromedans, however, the Greys got here in 1931. <laughs> sure. Are you going to their... trust them? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about those Andromedans. <laughs> Because of their ability to time travel, it looks like they have been here thousands of years. They can go backwards in time. Yeah. If you can go backwards in time, you can literally alter the consciousness of any race. You can alter any event. That's exactly what they have done. They're not the only ones who have done this. There's also a group from Sirius B who have also done this. It took me a long time to understand why it was that they wanted to do this. The bottom line is that they wanted to control us. No, no. Makes sense. <laughs> we have things that they want. We have the benefit of having been on uh, having been on 11th density which means that we have covered a very large area of spiritual evolvement which is why our range of emotion is so large oh yeah. they hate us for our feelings i guess <laughs> they it's want so that messy. information not only that but with the new frequency coming in and third density being to implode on itself but well, third density beginning to implode on itself mm -hmm. the grays are trying to save their race According to Moronet, you remember Moronet, yeah. there are only 2,000 real greys left. All the rest are clones, organic robots. No. They do not carry a spiritual essence. Folks, we are talking about a, a technologic technology thousands of years ahead of where we are now. Okay, folks. All right. <laughs> folks, let me break it down for you, folks. Yep. Well, okay, that was well, crazy. I just... How does your conspiracy work if it's like uh, there are two thousand? There's only like two thousand of them, and they can't really do shit. <laughs> oh, think, I'm scared uh, now. <laughs> I think now's a good time to take uh, a break from this uh, lady and uh, uh, check in with Frank West, oh, thank who God. is still in in Batopolis, robot, Robopolis, <laughs> Ro Ro yeah. Robotronic. Yeah, now still. it's now the screen is just dark. <laughs> Yeah. Um, He's playing his, the classic silent film Metropolis. His ammo is glowing, but he just seems to be wandering around. Frank, are, are you there? Hello, yes. Are you live in Metropolis? Where are you again? The botology? Botology, I'm sorry. Um, so did you discover anything new? Have you like gotten any power-ups that people should know um, about? I did. I got... Uh, I had a choice between making my suits, suit slightly better at two things or making it a lot better at one thing. Oh, and I'm dead. Wow. <laughs> Great. The, the robots Wait, seem to be good? Isn't shooting... that good in this game? <laughs> Not in this case, because this level starts you in the wilderness, so you have to walk for like a minute and a half before you why, get... Why do the ro robots all just shoot at the ground? I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> oh, because I think I was dead, but they still wanted to shoot something. <laughs> I'm, I'm noticing a lot of these shots aren't connecting. Um, They're uh... not very good at anything, which is a saving... Like, the shiny ladies are have tons of health and like mm. they're not actually worth fighting but thankfully if you run past them and then get like to their back they're like well where'd he go guess it was nothing <laughs> and then they leave must have been the wind i will also say in fact i'm gonna do this right now so if you wait like look she's gonna just walk off let's do it again to this one <laughs> and now she's just gonna walk off see ya um too much jet makes you jumpy <laughs> I will also say that I am ninety percent sure that this is the last level because oh, they said God. it was the last level. Wow, that's exciting! Well, enjoy it. Yeah, it's possible that there'll be one more because they said there's also the office, so there might oh, be one God. final level that's the office. Well, there's got to be a sewer level, right? Doesn't there have to be a sewer level in here? <laughs> that's like a whole different set of assets. I don't know. Oh man. yeah, fair enough. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, 
Red Lake was varied in its shittiness, but I just love how every time we go to this, it looks like the exact same level. Uh -huh. I have no idea of your progress. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to notice progress if you're not watching closely. I love that when you like run up to the robot ladies, they're just like, I don't, I don't know. I, I did not expect that. <laughs> I guess I guess you win. I don't know. <laughs> All what are right. they shooting well, at over there? Is it? Okay, my... she's just shooting them. Oh, she really. Sometimes uh, an enemy remembers that you exist forever, and they'll just like run at you even after you die from across the level. <laughs> I love how they just shoot from their regular run cycle. They're just yeah. casually walking with the gun, shooting at you. <laughs> What's really fun is that they will shoot at you sideways too. It'll just kind of like fly out the gun. Delightful. Well, thanks, Seth Frank. Slimy Rollins in the chat points out that this guy has a really nice butt that you can't keep your eyes off of. Uh, yeah, really, we should yeah, maybe really. set up a second. What time is it? Fuck, I have no idea. Oh, it's 6.30. Um, I could probably... The other game I have on backup, I could probably get through if I beat this game quickly. Are you fucking suicidal? You want to play another game? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for charity. Well, it's for a good cause. For yeah. All right, we'll talk to you soon, Frank. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Bye. Frank. Good luck in robotology. <laughs> uh, so, uh, at, looking at the at this um, uh, uh, document, <clears throat> yeah, there is not a lot of connection uh, between the, the the Mormons and the aliens as we we had promised. So, um, I want to just uh, get to one of the long screeds at the beginning and maybe kind of. Uh, do it sort of round robin style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody just go ahead and try to find why the reptilian concentration in Utah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to control F on that. And uh, I will, uh, okay. I, yeah, I will go ahead and get started. And mm -hmm. uh, somebody just tag me okay. uh, whenever they want to jump in. So why is the reptilian concentration in Utah? Utah is a Mormon run state. This church was created by a man named Joseph Smith. However, the real power behind its growth was John C. Bennett, who was apparently one of many Scottish Rite agents assigned to infiltrate the various religious movements of the world. If one does a thorough study of the Masonic connections to major denominations, they may discover some surprises. For instance, Norman Vincent Peale was a 33rd degree Mason, as were the followers of the Jehovah's Witnesses, Theosophy, Scientology, wow. Unitarianism, and so on. Oh my God. The Scottish Rite, incidentally, was created by Jesuits and Masons at the Parisian College of Clermont. Those damn Frenchies. <laughs> Dr. John Coleman states that the 13 Maltese Jesuits, 13 Wicca Masons, and 13 Black Nobility members make up the 39 members of the Bilderberg Group, ultimately yeah. controlled. Oh, yay! Wait, 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 ultimately wait, wait, wait. No, controlled I need my ding sound. <laughs> <laughs> ultimately well, controlled by the Bavarian <laughs> Illuminati through the Scottish Rite. The Master Mason, oh. John C. Bent. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I, couldn't find ding. I couldn't find ding on the soundboard. <laughs> the Bilderberger group is wacky. <laughs> <laughs> the Bilderberger group, boy. <laughs> uh, I'm tagging out. Okay. Right. Uh, Mormonism became a hybrid religion between Christianity, worship of the Lamb, and Gnostic <laughs> Scottish Rite Masonry, worship of the serpents. Even today, the Mormon masses in Utah believe they are Christians. And even the majority of the Council of Twelve, unknown to most of his membership, are actually controlled by the Scottish Rite Council of Fifty behind the scenes. These insiders allow only the oldest member of the outer Council of Twelve to become president of the church. President of the church. <laughs> yeah, the president of the church. That's what it's called. It's a democratically elected position. <laughs> Apparently, the older these council members are, the less likely they will be to discern what is going on behind the scenes, to make waves or make changes or challenge the hidden Scottish Rite infiltrators and controllers. One can see a similar power, I'm sorry, a similar power play being carried out in the Vatican. For instance, Pope John Paul I sought to make some heavy duty changes in the Catholic system. But the power, but, but the powers that would be had different ideas. You're gonna strain your voice being that sarcastic so much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> this is just how I was born. <laughs> Uh, after this pope was assassinated in true Scottish rite fashion, only 33 Wait, days into his term, a former <laughs> Nazi advisor who had earlier sold, earlier in his life sold cyanide gas to the Nazis for their, for their gas chambers, was elected pontiff. This new emperor of the Holy Roman Empire was the man who changed his name to John Paul II. Wow. All right, also, he, this person thinks... Yeah, this person thinks that John Paul II, who is the first Polish pope, was a Nazi sympathizer. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> hey, what are you guys up to? You seem cool. <laughs> ah, that's all water under the bridge. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Sorry about those barricades, guys. Welcome to Warsaw. Um, um I'll tap. I'll tap in. Okay, yeah. The Scottish right has the power to control the media and therefore the influence to support or tear down a religion through public opinion and their desire to be a friend of the world <laughs> and escape criticism. Many mainline religions must sell out to the Masons or risk persecution. Most Mormons outwardly profess their hatred of oh, okay, secret combinations. <laughs> <laughs> not really, really not realizing that they along with most other mainline denominations around the world have fallen victim to that very force they do not realize that they are one of the many controlled religions that the illuminati plans to keep in check so they do not interfere with the new world order oh my god force us to listen to substance 1987 uh, 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 ideologies cannot be controlled okay Ideologies cannot be controlled. This is why the Pentecostals who stress ideological lifestyle over organizational structure are frustrating s. They're frustrating. <laughs> frustratings. They're such frustratings. <laughs> if you don't believe that the Scottish Rite is a Gnostic serpent cult, just take a look at the designs inside the House of the Temple, the Scottish Rite headquarters in Washington, D.C. that sits atop the pentagram-like street layout of the capital city. <laughs> Let's also take into account the Name the Pentagon. Oh. See the connections? Get it? Mm -hmm. Penta <laughs> means five. Uh, nutshell, can you take... Um, Blow is the revelation? Yes. Yes. Blow is a revelation from Utah researchers who wish to be identified only as J.R., you most likely have heard of the Mormon Church, LDS, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints here in Utah, of which they control the total state in all fields and phases of human endeavors. They've built temples in 100 countries. The missionaries in all these countries, including the USA, work with the CIA. Yeah. That's where missionaries can get into countries where the CIA cannot. They collect information on the people and everything of any and all nature, the country's government and all their activities. All this worldwide information is shared with the CIA and it is fed into three of the largest computers in the world, church owned here in Salt Lake City. These reportedly fill the entire top two or three floor levels of the church office building in Salt Lake City, Branton. This church is one of the most powerful and rich organizations in the world today. It has one of the largest and secret police forces in the world. I have collected this kind of information for 45 years. I just, I just picture the CIA operative going, it's like, all right, Elder Smith, Elder Wilson, what do you have for me? It's like, well, we knocked on this door and they slammed it on us. And then we knocked on this other door and then they slammed on us. And one of them took a Book of Mormon and then they slammed the door on us. Tell and nobody then... about our secret organization. <laughs> Secret police force, they're knocking on doors. <laughs> uh, I'll continue. Uh, the above is not all they are into. A high official of this church was recently kicked out of the church as he got too snoopy and he Ooh. asked too many questions. Mm -hmm. He came to me a few months ago and he told me what happened. He said that his life had been threatened if he told anyone of what had he had found out. So he told me that if anything happened to him to release the information he gave me, this information concerns a giant cavern beneath Salt Lake City and the Wasatch Mountain Range. It goes north to Idaho and the south, clear down past the Arizona line with offshoots west into Nevada and east into Colorado. That is an abuse of all caps. This cavern has been common knowledge for over 120 years. Many cases for the many cases over the years have appeared in the newspapers about people and groups of people going into the cavern but never coming out 
Oh, Several who no. did find their way out were hopelessly insane. Hey, yay, 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 yay. <laughs> what is the tag allowed? <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, Portex pointed out that we don't have Mormon Jesus on the soundboard, and that's yeah. a. I'm I'm sorry, I never mentioned it. I feel I thought Jesus. about it on the bus. I've so ruined I everything. When I got home. Mormons believe in Mormon <sighs> Jesus. At the present, the archaeological department of Utah are down in so southeastern Utah looking for a certain entrance into this cavern that John Brewer of Manti, Utah, discovered around 30 years ago, around 1960. He brought out of the cavern quite a few ancient plates of an unknown language. Mm -hmm. Some of the plates were gold, some silver, brass, copper, and clay. He mm. also saw many strange things he won't talk about, <laughs> such as what he thought were weapons of crystal. His son was tortured and killed. About, I'm not going to talk about this, guys, but I think there's some crystal weapons down there. Talk about all this shit, but like, let's keep the secret. Let's keep the crystal weapons secret. It would melt your mind to know about that. His son was tortured and killed by some unknown person or persons trying to force the secrets out of him. The church wanted the plates in the worst way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They still do. Tag. The information I was given by this former member of the church is very close to being the same as! <laughs> the information has Surfa and Customs using research labs, some of the best in the United States. A lot of genetic experiments and research <laughs> is going on here in different laboratories. Note, one source has stated that a Mr. Fleischer, now deceased, took part in a training mission to, accom to acclimate humanoid aliens to a human society in a fashion similar to that which was performed by the well-known contactee, Howard Menger. This project... Damn you, Max Fleischer. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this All is your what your cartoons have brought. This project was initiated in Salt Lake City with nearly 200 alien personnel and has since spread to Arizona and other parts of the world. One source who studied at the Salt Lake Technical College stated to a fellow student, confided, stated that a fellow student confided to him that he was actually from an underground city and was working here on the surface. Uh -huh. There have been other rumors of individuals living in the city who were from underground communities. But whether these arrived on the surface by choice or were driven to the surface by the reptiloid infestation of the North American substructure, <laughs> that's uncertain. Both scenarios may exist. There sure. are nevertheless suggestions that all three groups from the United Federation, the Draconian Empire, and the Brav Bavarian Collaboration are active in this part of the country, Branton. By the way, by the way, I just want yeah. you to know. What's that? Yeah, I just needed you to know. I just need you to know something. <laughs> Thousands of children and adults have vanished without a trace, and most of them here in Utah. <laughs> without a trace, but we we traced it to Utah. Oh, that made me lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I. It's just aliens getting to you, Lemon. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tag in unless the show wants to turn. No. Nope. Uh, I did hit the ding button. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Branton reported that a gentleman gave him information that the church has been working on a vault-like suppository. <laughs> vault-like repository. <laughs> oh, Jeez. damn it. I was thinking about suppositories. I know. Would have been a much better story. Uh. <laughs> repository in the mountains behind Salt Lake. Part of the upper cavern to put all records, secret documents, and other valuables for safekeeping. This is the aforementioned vault in Granite Mountain up on the slope of Little Cottonwood Canyon. He said for over a period of time, he helped in this detail. Several times he said he spotted several small humanoids with extra large eyes watching them from a distance. Well, those could have been the Jawas. <laughs> That's true. He said there was a lot of building going on in the lower portion of the cavern. He heard motors, dynamos, the high whine of generators and voices. All this he said had been going on for over 15 years that he knew of, or previous to 1975, Brandon. He said this curiosity got the best of him one day. He slipped away from the work game that was in and went down to a lower part of the canyon. He came to some buildings with lots of rooms. There was a lot of building and other activity going on. There were many men and women working on workbenches with computers and building <laughs> electronic units of some kind. Among these workers were more of these small humanoids and big black eyes. That's all you want to go? <laughs> He said, there was a lot of building going on in the lower portion of the cavern. Nope, that, he heard 
Nope. <laughs> oh, no. I'm hearing it again. I hear it in my head. <laughs> when he started back, two security officers caught him and escorted him back to the repository vault, where they reported his actions and wanderings into the off-limits areas to his superiors. They, in turn, put him on a truck and sent him back to town. He was warned <laughs> to keep his mouth shut about what he saw. They told him what was going on down there was a U.S. government operation and was top secret. No, nope. you should get your math about that top secret and get in the truck. <laughs> no, I don't it, was, get. it was actually a CIA, well, op CIA operation. The CIA. Well, has Andy, they were water. aliens in the hills. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. The yeah. CIA has an inner core who work for Bavarian intelligence and an <laughs> outer CIA. core made out of delicious chocolate who are led <laughs> to believe that they are working for the best interests of American intelligence. Russ Bacher has stated that there are two factions that are presently fighting for control of the CIA itself, suggesting that the outer core of patriots who have fought communism in the past are now waking up to the fact that the inner core of the CIA is actually being run by National Socialists! Oh, of course, um, of course, um, of course. I wonder what factor runs our homeland security. The National Socialists? Case, the, the, X, the X factor? That this activity taking place within the massive cavern systems below the Wasatch front of the Western Rockies is a U.S. government get 20 years in a federal prison or worse. He kept asking questions to different members he thought were friends. Some reported him. In turn, he was apostated from the church with a death threat. Now we're going to apostate you. Now get in the truck. <laughs> We're gonna, I like the apostate, Carl. <laughs> okay, so we're going to kick you out of the church, and then we're also going to kill you. The first part kind of seems redundant now that I say it next to each other. I mean, like, why don't we just do the it's second a thing? Room. They don't have to do the two things at the same time. They can kick him out well, now. Yeah, and... yeah, I guess we should have burial. I guess we should kick you out of the church before we kill you, because then you don't get to go to heaven. It's okay, you know, it's, it's, it's got a threat. threat. It's just, uh, and don't come back or we'll kill you. No. Oh, okay. Fair enough. There's a lot of thought going into this. <laughs> this is the third time in the last 20 years I have heard about this activity from different friends of mine who are members of this church. I didn't pay too much attention to it until I received the info on <clears throat> Dulce, New Mexico. I think it's high time to put this info out to the public. Most people are so brainwashed by the church here and the television that most people won't believe it anyway. But I believe there are people in this land of ours who will believe. Those are the ones who need all the information of this nature they can receive. At least they will be aware of the existence of the situation and won't be so easily trapped. They, in turn, can help others. Sincerely, JR. I just want to uh, point everybody over to the stream for a second because uh, Pazdronic has drawn the small humanoids with <laughs> large eyes. And they are terrifying. Like, oh, no. You are oh, no. Ah! It, it's all becoming quite clear to me. <laughs> oh, no. The Segoy race is taking over. <laughs> all Look right. at all those Bratz dolls. They want to enslave us all. <laughs> <laughs> so this, back to, uh, back to, um, Mary's, uh, Mary Sutherland's uh, writing. Mm -hmm. uh, being that the term dreamland has been given to the cavern systems below the four corners, as well as those below Nevada, I believe that it's fair to assume that the massive underground system connecting the two can also be given the same appellation. It is possible that the war has raged through the dreamland complex spanning Utah, Nevada, Idaho, Colorado, Arizona, etc. for centuries. Kirby, no. <laughs> Apache Hopi activist Robert Morning Sky has stated that his ancestors were driven to the surface by the Two Hearts, or the Children of the Lizard, who invaded their underground world and forced them to take refuge in the outer world. Now, when you said or there, is that an either or scenario? Like it, like that it was either the two hearts or the, I, like she was mumbling. I didn't understand if she said two hearts or children of the lizard. I guess the lizard people have two hearts. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Sure. Yeah. yeah that's canon. I don't know. I mean, the iguanoids or the, the dinosaurs might have two hearts. <laughs> the dinosaurs. Another Hopi legend states that some of their numbers in the ancient time turned to practicing sorcery 
And if we combine this legend with Morning Sky statements, we can assume that the sorcerers also betrayed the rest of the Hopi to the serpent race in exchange for the promises of power, etc. It mm. seems <laughs> that some things never change. This warfare seems to compare with the Darrow Tarot conflicts referred to by Richard Shaver. Oh, it is sure. possible. Oh, no! the Darrow's. Darrow Tarot. <laughs> it is possible that the Dolce Wars, which began in 1979 after human scientists discovered thousands of abductees who were being held in cages and in cold storage deep below Dolce, oh, and the Groom that. Wars, which began in the same time <laughs> wait, after wait. a human... Mm. I want to be the Groom! No, I want to be the Groom! Groom Wars, next on TLC. <laughs> I don't know no, about I'm you sorry. guys, but I'm kind of Continue. excited by this new Netflix series. <laughs> My tuxedo uh, the, has to be perfect. <laughs> uh, the Groom Wars, which began around the same time after a human security guard was killed uh, when he challenged an alien dictate that these human security personnel could not enter alien-controlled sections below Nevada with loaded weapons. Wow. Were more outward manifestations of a, quote, Deeper conflict that has raged through the centuries, one that we might refer to as the Dreamland Wars, Branton. Dreamland <laughs> Branton. Wars. In conclusion, Branton. Branton. <laughs> uh, so, F+, plus, uh, what did we learn about the uh, alien Mormon conspiracy? This, uh, this woman's not very focused on her subjects. <laughs> no. She seems to very easily get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Positronics drawing a very cute uh, reptilian two heart. <laughs> oh, that is adorable! Reptilian. Oh. It's Godzilla like. <laughs> Don't let their looks deceive you. They're <laughs> taking over. Oh. Absolutely kawaii. <laughs> I learned that you can. Uh... I learned that in this doc, you can track uh, when the medication wore off and when the when she took her medication again, because it, it was like it's it's you know crazy weird conspiracy stuff, sure, but it's like written relatively well at the point, and then it just you could see the capitals coming in and the brackets coming in. It's like all right, all right, let's let's get another pill. I wasn't really sure who the villain was, like who we actually had to look out for. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I think so... it's the Masons and the CIA. The and National the Reptoids. Masons. I, I mean, I guess that's sort of the thing in like in like most paranoid conspiracies is that like and literally everybody is the enemy. Like, there's not like you, you you very rarely like have allies in this thing. It's like everyone's out to get you. I love I love I think it came up multiple times. I love that like this person was under death threats and they won't tell anyone, but they told me. <laughs> um, hmm. I I see a plot hole here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's, well, in the next, what's in the next hour, Adam? Well, the next hour, I was on my way to check, and I forgot, but it is... What is it? It's is free it, balling. It's free balling. Yeah! That's right. Free balling. It is return of free balling. Uh, it is a recording that we lost, and so we're getting the return of free balling. <laughs> Stick around, everybody. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with more Garbage Day. Bye. Keep donating. Thank you!